and welcome to Art Beyond the Museum's UK edition. I'm Daniel and I'll be talking you through this series. Right now, you're joining me at restaurant A Wong in the heart of London. Let me tell you a bit about A Wong and our location and where we are before I touch on Art Beyond the Museums. A Wong is a two Michelin star restaurant in the heart of London, ran by renowned chef Andrew Wong. It is currently the only two Michelin star restaurant of Chinese origin outside of Asia, a very unique location for this amazing art series. Now, Art Beyond Museums, what is it and why are we here? Let's look at museums first. Museums, are they places to collect and exhibit art? No, they're not. Museums are places to collect art and bring it to the people, share it with the people. So when we find ourselves in a global pandemic, as we are currently all feeling the effects of, we can no longer visit our favourite museums, our favourite galleries, our favourite cities, or travel to the places we want to go around the world. So here at Art Beyond Museums, we're going to bring the art, the cities, the places, the amazing places you're missing out of, right to you in the comfort of your own home. So, who's bringing you Art Beyond Museums? What is this series about? It's brought to you by Master Yun Lung Zhe of Lotus on Water in Singapore. Master Yun is a sixth generation Feng Shui master. In 2006, collecting all of his knowledge, his expertise, and everything he's learned throughout his career and his experience, he founded Lotus on Water Gallery in Singapore. Not only that, Master Yun is a highly decorated artist. In 2019, CCTV China awarded him the I Ching Gold Medal Master Award, along with the Achievement in Arts Award. So a very renowned painter and a very unique painter. As we look more into the history of Master Yun's art, the art of Chinese cuisine and how they connect and cross over in different fields, but they find a link between them, whether it be creativity, tradition, the yin and yang and the balance with it all. Not only that, Master Yun is the first and only artist to ever have an art exhibition on a Great Wall of China. And that is the exhibition we'll be looking at today. This piece just here to the left of me was one of 108 cranes that built up a 13.8 metre long piece of artwork which was displayed on the Great Wall of China. These pieces have now been taken apart and sent to all different parts of the globe and we're lucky enough to have some of the pieces here with us today in restaurant A Wong in the heart of London. When we talk about the history of China, the Great Wall of China springs to everyone's mind. A country so rich in history, so rich in culture, with so many influences around the world, we look at how them traditional influences affect Master Yun's paintings and his painting styles. Chef Andrew Wong will tell us how it's influenced the dishes that he presents. And then we look at how Master Yun has brought it into a more modern era. As you can see by this painting, it is not a normal traditional Chinese painting. It's filled with colour, vibrance, gold, silver, red, yellow, orange, a very bright piece that is not traditional in Chinese paintings, but it reflects Master Yun and what he wants from his Feng Shui paintings. The vibrancy, the passion, the art wants to come through the page, come off the canvas, and that's exactly what he does. So let's look at the crane here. The crane has said one of 108 cranes that are all painted in 24 karat gold. Not a normal crane, as you can see, it's a very rounded body, a larger body. On this one, the wings are opened up. It uses 24 karat gold, representing the heart of the crane, that it has a heart of gold. These are not just normal cranes, they are mystical beings, celestial beings. And then when we look closer into it, you can see the black calligraphy work around the crane. This is a use of a traditional Chinese method using black pine soot ink and calligraphy strokes. And now we're seeing the connection between traditional and modern artwork. Not only that, Master Yun uses different types of techniques that are not normally found in Chinese paintings. The use of layers, how he builds up the layers using a traditional oil technique, oil canvas painting technique, Master Yun builds up layers. In these layers, we have splashes of Laurent Perrier champagne 18 karat gold and 18 karat silver. The use of this creates a layered effect and almost a 3D effect, so it's coming off the page, again expressing vibrancy and warmth from the painting. So, as we look more into the paintings, you need to understand what it makes you feel. What does this painting make you feel? How does it come off the page? We look at the crane. In other paintings, the cranes look away from themselves as they look to the future, what else is happening around it. This crane is slightly different. 
you can see the head looking back in itself, almost as an appreciation of what it's done. It looks back at its heart of gold, what it's achieved, and it almost feels safe, but also proud and bold, surrounded by these beautiful flowers, these beautiful, vibrant colors. It's a pure celebration of its own self and its wealth and its status, and it represents that longevity that cranes are so famous for representing. So right now, we're lucky enough to be joined by Andrew Wong. And as we've said earlier in the episode, we've already touched on the use of traditional techniques and how Master Yun in his paintings brings them into a modern way. Not only that, the balance between classic and traditional, the yin and yang, the balance in that. Also the creativity that goes behind Master Yun's paintings, how he builds it up in layers. Right now, Andrew's gonna tell us a bit about how that also reflects in his food, which is also considered an artwork. So Andrew, please tell us a bit more. Yeah, I think creativity comes in lots of different forms, you know, and I think what we do at the restaurant is very much about um, connecting history, culture and gastronomy um, into something which you can eat. Um, you know, we, we, we work with uh, anthropologists, we work with historians um, in trying to, what I always consider, like painting pictures of times and moments um, within China or through Chinese culture and Chinese history um, in trying to uh, interest our guests into moments of time that we want to share. That's incredible. So thank you so much for that sharing that with us. So as we approach layers, so when we look at Master Yun's paintings, on Dong Bar paper he uses this to build layers. Now Andrew, when you think of a dish, do you look at layers, do you look at textures, do you look at how it will eventually finish on a plate as you plan the dish, or is it something that comes naturally to you? You know, a lot of this is kind of internalised, I think, sometimes, you know. We norm the starting point is normally an ingredient, or a story, or an anecdote, or a bit of poetry, or a painting. Um, and then from then, as, as you described with, with painting, you kind of build layer upon layer through taste, through colour, um, through texture, uh, through technique, um, in trying to find um, interesting and, and respectful yet innovative ways to, to kind of share and celebrate 3,000 years of Chinese gastronomy. Yes, absolutely incredible. And a final little touch from you. So when you look at Marcion's paintings, as I mentioned, he uses traditional techniques, but when you look at the paintings, they're far from traditional. Would you say that's also reflective in your food? Do you look at traditional techniques and bring them into the future? Or do you just start from modern techniques? You know, I think as a chef, I think the one thing I have learned is that actually there's a timelessness to a lot of these techniques um, that have existed through, through China. Um, over the past 3,000 years. And I know sometimes chefs get very kind of uh, worked up and, and get excited in this idea of improving things through technology. But actually, every time I've ever tried it, it's just been this massive journey of, of kind, kind of um, thinking you can do it, and then you end up normally back at square one at the original, at the original technique and the original process. Um, and, and, you know, with, with the paintings, it's, the one thing I do love is this idea that it's it's not just a visual thing. It's like it's, it's about a celebration of a culture and celebration of of history and, and techniques through history. Um, some which can be seen, some that can't be seen. It can just be felt. Um, and I think sometimes that's what is more interesting. It's about the story that it tells and the hidden narrative that exists within. And do you see what you just described was absolutely amazing. So there's so much hidden narratives. Master Yun's paintings under UV light, they completely change from the paintings you see to more celestial bodies, heavenly bodies, a completely different view. When you do your food, you do your dishes, obviously you can't hold UV lights over them all the time. Do you try and get the same aspect, the storytelling, a bit more to the dish than just meets the eye? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think a lot of our dishes, you know, we, we very rarely create dishes uh, completely from scratch. A lot of them are about evolving dishes and, and 
slowly adapting it over time, or through seasons, or through um, new sources of inspiration, or, or new work that they're working on, either with anthropologists, or with farmers, or with growers, or with in, um, ingredients. And it, it, it's about this idea that a dish, to me, is um, something which is a slightly modified and slightly tweaked piece of work over a long period of time as opposed to just being this single identity that, that just appears. Um, and, and so when you when you see a dish at, at a restaurant, it is to me always um, 10 years worth of fine tweaks. Um, and it's about sharing that and sh sharing the kind of iterations that have exist existed over those nine years with guests that make the dish interesting make the dish what it is. That's incredible. So obviously it's essentially a nine year journey that you're putting onto a plate. Well, the restaurant's only been over nine years, so most things are nine years. Yes. Old. But actually, as I said, the, the, the bigger picture is it's more than 3,000 years. You know? I think a lot of it is about celebrating a country um, that is so rich and diverse, um, a country that borders 14 different other countries, a country that through the Silk Road, through international trade, um, historically has actually absorbed more outside influences than any other gastronomy in the world and any other culture in the world. Um, and so it is this idea that you know everything you perceive isn't necessarily the truth and what we always sometimes perceive to be Chinese or non-Chinese isn't necessarily what it appears to be. That's an incredible way to look at that, and it's a lot of it's an eye opener for most people because, as I said, most people have this singularity idea of Chinese cuisine. But as you said, you're going back through thousands of years of history to get to where you are now. So, similar in terms of Master Yun, he opened Lotus on Water in 2006. So, restaurant your restaurant's been open for nine years. Master Yun, 15 years for Lotus on Water. But you're talking about a sixth generation Feng Shui master and feng shui well as a culture goes back so much further so we can relate that and you can see the connections automatically between food in china and feng shui culture in china again reflecting more how rich in culture and history china actually is sure and i think as i said like a lot of the feng shui and also food in general within our culture is it's not necessarily a phenomenon it's, it's just internalized um, I think more so than any other culture in the world uh, and I think sometimes people try to pigeonhole stuff or try to um, give things very clear boundaries but actually both food and feng shui are very very timeless internalized things within Chinese culture. No. Thank you so much Andrew, Pleasure. absolutely incredible insight into your mind and how you think. Thank you so much for joining us today and Thanks. hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thank you. So we're going to look at other collections from the artwork today. Right here we have the longevity of a crane series, number 62. And over here we have the sun and moon has multiple lights. We're going to look at this one first, longevity of a crane. So in the previous painting we witnessed the crane itself. Here is a calligraphy work, again using traditional calligraphy strokes. Master Yun's modern use of 24 karat gold in his paintings. And again it represents longevity, boldness, status, which is what a crane represents within Chinese culture. Something like this hanging in your house will bring you prosperity, strength, wealth. And again, like all of Master Yun's paintings, under a UV light, this completely changes. This painting itself almost comes alive again, but in the nighttime, representing space, the galaxy, the stars, going into the unknown, stuff we don't know about, almost a mystical being. Yet it's just calligraphy at eyesight, a beautiful boldness, gold, which is so welcomed on earth, is so treasured on earth, something that we ground with, that is found in the ground, we respect. So looking at this painting, as I said, under UV lights, it becomes completely something else, a heavenly body, as if you're looking out into space. So the use of gold, ground materials, pine soot for the blackness, these are natural materials found within the earth, but then when you go into UV lights, it's an out of space painting almost. This is also the same case for the sun and the moon has multiple lights. Now, we talk about balance within paintings. The sun and moon must be a balance. We've mentioned yin and yang, the balance that we find. Again, the sun and moon, light and darkness, they need each other and they match perfectly together. Although they're completely opposing, they fit together perfectly. They need each other to survive. 
When we look at artwork, we look at creativity, we always look at balance. And as we are here in A Wong, we look at the balance and creativity in food, which Andrew touches on when he talks about his food. Looking at the history, the balance with modern, new, and again, we see it in the materials. The usage of the sun and the moon has multiple lights. These are all reflective and these are all things we can see across different paintings and different aspects of life. So, thank you for joining me here at A Wong in London for today's episode. Me, personally, I'm a chef and it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. If you're ever in London and you have the luxury to visit A Wong, I cannot recommend it highly enough. Currently in this global pandemic, your travel might be restricted. Whether you're in Singapore, America, even the UK itself, wherever you are, if you get the opportunity to visit here, come and witness it, come and witness the magical creations from Andrew himself. And then of course, if you ever want to get in touch about the paintings, contact Lotus in Water and one of this unique collection could be yours to own in your own home. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon. The Arts Beyond Museums series and Master Yun Longzi's Feng Shui Art are proud to be sponsored by Le Hong Perrier. For 200 over years, Le Hong Perrier has not worked with any other artist before. When you purchase a piece of Feng Shui Art exhibited in this Art Beyond Museums series, you will also be getting a complimentary set of five different specially selected cuvées of Le Hong Perrier Champagne. De La Cuvée, De Cuvée Rosé, Brut Millesimi, Demisec Harmony, and De Cuvée Grand Siac. So that you can enjoy the taste of elegance while basking in the prosperity of Master Yun's feng shui paintings and calligraphies. Cheers to prosperity and elegance.